ok. Now, we have looked at various models within our course many of these models can end up falling falling in any of these what is called a system archetypes uh, limits to growth shifting the burden eroding goals escalation success of to the successful tragedy of the commons fixes that fail growth and under investment accidental adversaries attractiveness principle it is uh, from brown 2002 the extended notes for this I uploaded in Moodle. It is also extended from Peter Senge's book called the fifth discipline which talks about nothing but system thinking uh, from 1990. Let me quickly explain about the different types of the system architects and where it is applicable. Uh, the Lumistic growth again a classical model uh, is attributed I mean it came from 1970s by uh, introduced by Meadows, Donal, Donella Meadows and Dennis Meadows and uh, in their uh, 1970s book, books also titled Limits to Growth. Uh, so, essential idea that they are saying is we are always looking at the results and efforts and it keeps reinforcing each other. However, or not, there is a limiting condition which over slowly over time gets affected like how much we are extracting like right now there is um, sufficient amount of say bauxite ore. Then we are going to keep exploiting it because we are looking at next uh, next quarter what is the forecast and really short term things, right. But only over a long period of time this is going to slowly start hitting. So, that is defined limiting condition and this slowing action since this loop is takes a much longer time period eventually everything will take a limit hit at some point in time after which your growth will start to come down. So, that is the classical limits to growth model archetype. Second is shifting the burden archetype. Uh, this left side here shows the generic structure. So, we have problem sym symptom, then there is some symptomatic solution. Once we given the problem symptom disappears based on symptom we treat the problem and the problem disappears very fast. However, because of a side effects the system of symptomatic solutions that we are providing it keeps the fundamental uh, solution is always is avoided it is delayed. So, after some time the problem again appears again it do the symptomatic solution again the problem disappears temporarily. However, the fundamental solution was never addressed. It results in a kind of a behavior what we call is we just uh, instead of looking for a solution for this fundamental solution we are looking at solving these symptoms. An example that is shown here is suppose there is pressure to deliver a product we may quickly rely on say the R and D staff to make quick fixes to our uh, particular say products. So, any problem is there and then we deliver the product ok let us just worry about today's shipment let us just finish it let us quickly fix the machine. So, that the, 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 this afternoon shipment goes like tomorrow shipment goes next week somehow the model is done we will we will we will get the better process later. The problem is they are relying on a very few experts to solve the problem. Result is since a lot of pressure deliver all the experts looking at the R and D they are sitting in the shop floor trying to fix the problem to ensure that the products are going. Uh, it is going to affect the local capability to actually solve the problem. The result is they may also not want to stick around if they are you know always fire fighting they may say ok I won't want to continue I mean leave uh, the organization which is the side effect you may end up actually facing. So, it kind of the problem symptom which keeps appearing again and again in this kind of sawtooth pattern that is there uh, and the symptomatic solution initially we may do some solution again and again we know that the solution does not work. So, it refers to that also kind of keeps uh, reducing and the fundamental problem keeps increasing. third kind of example is what is called as eroding goals. See this is to talk about we have a goal and we actually change the goal based uh, instead of trying to change the system to achieve the goal we actually change the goal. So, that it is in line with what we want to uh, what we have been achieving that is what eroding goals I am sure we are all familiar with. I am sure your current CPA is no relation to your goal CPA final semester settled 
सेटल इज अ वेरी कॉमन टर्म यू सेटल इन कोर्सेस सेटल इन एवरीथिंग ये सेटल हो गया बस सो दैट्स एरोडिंग गोल्स अह एंड द एग्जांपल इज टू चेंज द क्वालिटी गोल डिपेंडिंग ऑन कस्टमर्स परसेप्शन एंड कंपटिटर्स क्वालिटी so you might want to improve quality only if the competitors has much higher quality or if they are also not providing that much quality you might just saturate okay this much quality is enough in fact one other thing in india the so some of the products the demand is so high that they say look we are going to produce grade a products goes to this market grade b goes to this market grade c goes to this market i don't really want to micromanage the quality i'm going to produce in this any anyway. so those uh depends on based on what customer is doing you are actually changing your own goals Uh, as what you are setting uh, you can observe that all almost all these loops previous figures also in the one coming forward there are always these double lines indicating delays within the system that is actually causing this uh, dynamic behavior over time escalation is when say two parties are competing with each other then activity of a is seen as a Perceived as a threat by B, and then B takes counteractivity, which is seen as a threat to A, who then takes counteractivity. The classical result is both their activities is reinforce each other and cause es escalating behavior. Classical example is arms race. Another example you can think of is say restaurant chains. You know, Burger King opens, McDonald opens, Subway opens, Pizza Hut opens, Papa John's opens. Everybody starts competing, and as and more and more chains happen. then some closes some may feel the pinch some may may go out of business because they a bit too much uh, walmart 711s many of these even among corporations there is race it's not just arms race as in between nations when corporations has to for them the physical footprint may actually matter it it also works for healthcare also when there are multiple clinics nowadays are coming up so in competing clinics come by then they want to position themselves there so that is lead to escalation um, success to successful another interesting archetype uh this again many of us might have perceived or um, at least heard of suppose some resources kind of are given to say two parties a and b say maybe initially the equal resources suppose a produce some reasonable success then in future people may be more willing to give more resources to a than b now since a has more resource he can produce much better so that start to reinforce the effect in a while it causes an exponential collapse for b because b's performance is going down so they're unwilling to invest more in b as a result the performance even worsens over time um maybe like you know when there are competing startups some may get slightly better than that because initially they had a slight better success and that snowballed into more, attracting more and more investments so some become success some kind of collapse right so that's uh, what we mean by success to the successful um this is a much more complicated looking uh, causal loop it's not very apparent uh, immediately how to translate this into a stock flow also but what you are saying is okay first to define what is commons commons is any resource people material space whatever it is that is simultaneously made available to multiple people so when the same resource available to multiple people everybody thinks that that resource is there only for them and the result is they over exploit that resource they don't realize that many others are also competing for the same resource uh one example uh, there's a it team in a company may not may not have some experience but many large companies have one big it company they uh they get request from production department finance department admin department they get from company a b c d many companies uh, kind of give same request to them so then they have to deliver everywhere right so that is a tragedy in the sense that their own performance will start declining over time because they are unable to do their own projects they are always fire fighting uh, so one other thing is when people try to start up a technology hub in india or somewhere which is to solve all this is analytics hub where uh, there's one company or one center which will take request from companies of their own companies subsidiary units from australia austria brazil everywhere and they try to solve here 
then every company will perceive that this technology center is to solve only their problem and they will start pestering them. So, then that is what we call about tragedy of commerce. So, more uh, non corporate kind of examples would include exploitation of natural resource. So, everybody is going to see that the fishes in the sea is only for me, uh, the mining then the entire hill is only for me, there is nobody else who is competing for it etcetera. So, then uh, the tragedy is everybody will lose out that is a tragedy part in the future. Um, another archetype is fixes that fail, uh, there is a common phrase is like again it is very similar to the uh, second archetype we saw, uh, what was the second one the uh, shifting the burden archetype uh, we saw. Again we only address the problem symptom uh, which may cause some other consequences and the symptom will keep reappearing just a small part of that. Uh, one of the example uh, given is the number of tobacco lawsuits and then the tobacco companies made lot of public denials saying that uh, when it does not cause uh, cancer and things like that, but then after delay it caused lot of scientific research is started publishing and then more number of tobacco lawsuits start coming much later and much larger. So, the problem did not go away, it came in a much larger amount uh, later. Growth and under investment, it builds upon the limits to growth. So, already there is a limit to growth which is happening in this loop here, but based on demand our own growing action gets uh, tapered off as soon as we start hitting limits, uh, our own capacity investment starts to fall down that will put further restrictions on how much we can actually grow uh, based on the initial uh, shock that we may perceive early on. This is even more crazy looking thing, it is accidental adversaries, it is actually similar to escalation, but oh, happening in the other direction, uh, you can ignore the actual diagram. So, what it is trying to say is, suppose two people are equal footing, but then one perceives some wrongdoing from the other, then they say okay, you know let me do something else which is going to affect uh, my own success as well as it might have unintended obstruction of B's success then B gets offended and B does something else to change his success which inadvertently offends the other person. Uh, the result is everybody both parties starts to lose out on the long term because uh, they felt uh, the other was doing something only to uh, spite me, but it was not so they just perceived it and the result is uh, both are going down. One is called attractiveness principle similar to limits to growth, but with multiple slowing actions. It is not just one activity which slows things down, multiple things may come in uh, parallel to limit your growth. Um, so, uh, so when things go bad, multiple things get attracted to that and uh, both is going to affect the end results uh, within a mod within a system. So, that is what is captured in this attractiveness principle uh, archetype, more discussions on this is written up. But the interesting thing about is people have actually put it all together in a nice flowchart kind of thing to see. For example, let us say what are we concerned about growth or fixing a problem. So, let us just pick one say I am interested in uh, uh, fixing a problem. So, is there a balancing loop ok, what kind of balancing loop my fix again keeps coming back or while waiting for the my fix to take hold to release the tension I become satisfied with less or but my fix is your nightmare. Suppose we say we are going to wait until my fix is going to work, then until then I need to do something, then it can lead to eroding goals kind of models. And if the eroding goals undermine long term growth, yes, then we are looking at growth and under investment kind of scenarios. So, this is just a kind of uh, interesting flow chart that tries to connect all these archetypes and what scenarios we might actually be uh, useful for that, I take some effort to uh, understand and uh, okay. <laughs>